So last night we got some pretty interesting news and rumours about the next Battlefield game. So I thought I'd jump on and round them all up for you along with some of the last official details that we got from EA about the game. Now, I haven't played Battlefield regularly for a long time, but if you are a long-time subscriber of the channel, you'll remember I used to exclusively post Battlefield content right up until pretty much the pandemic started. And not since 2042 has come out have I really played any kind of Battlefield game consistently. But I have been paying attention to what's been happening with this game, Battlefield 2042, and the Battlefield franchise, because to be completely honest, I do miss playing it. It used to be my absolute favourite game to play. But unfortunately, Battlefield 2042 just wasn't it. But I digress. Let's get on with this brand new news and info about, let's call it, Battlefield 2025. A few weeks ago, we got official confirmation that the next Battlefield game isn't set to release until the year 2025. That came from EA's own earnings call. And that means that by the time it releases, which is likely going to be October or November 2025, we'll have had a four-year gap between Battlefield games, which... I think might be the longest ever, I think. There might have been a longer gap back in the early 2000s, I'm not entirely sure, but there was a three-year gap between Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1, although we did have Hardline release in 2015, so that's a one-year gap to Battlefield 1. Whatever, it's, four years is a, is a pretty long time. And of course, October 2025, that's still more than a year and a half away loads of time before the next Battlefield game comes out, so the game is nowhere near being finished yet. And we also know that perhaps more teams and developers than ever are working on this next Battlefield game. A brand new team, well not brand new anymore, it was like two years ago when it was formed, called Ridgeline Games is working on narrative and single player stuff for the game. Then we've got Ripple Effect, formerly the Dice LA Studio, they're working on the game too, alongside the original Dice Studio in Stockholm. Now that team in Stockholm is not the same one that worked on those Grand Slam hits like Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 1. Those games came out nearly a decade and over a decade ago, so a lot of those developers have since moved on and are working at other studios. Plus there is a small team at Criterion working on the next Battlefield game as well, so that is a huge number of developers inputting on the next Battlefield title. And overall, despite that timescale being extremely long, I do actually think it's a good thing. Battlefield 2042 and even the previous game, Battlefield 5, they did not launch in good states and they didn't launch with the level of content that Battlefield fans really expect from these games. So having more time to work on these things, that's got to be a positive when you look at the history of the franchise. There's also a brand new leadership team working on this Battlefield game. After the launch of Battlefield 2042 a few years ago, it was all change at the top of the Battlefield franchise because that game largely failed to perform and it came out in a pretty poor state. So there were lots of changes made at the top. It's now being overseen by a few different people. The first one you probably know, Vince Zampella. He's the mastermind behind older Call of Duty games, Titanfall and Apex Legends. He's a big high up at EA now. There's also an ex-Call of Duty leader, Byron Bede. He's now the general manager of the Battlefield franchise. And then Marcus Leto, he headed up the Ridgeline team. Leto being famous for his work on the Halo franchise and some of the original stories told over there. Now I say headed because just in the last few days, news has surfaced that Marcus Leto has left his role at EA and Ridgeline of his own accord and he'll now be taking time away from gaming to work out what he wants to do next. Cue the Battlefield community chaos. I've seen lots of people getting extremely worried about this, saying it's not a good sign when a leader leaves during the middle of development, let alone the person who helps set up the entire narrative and story-based studio for the next game and beyond. And I can't lie, I am a little bit concerned too, but honestly, I don't see much point worrying about it right now. At least they're not leaving their position the moment as game has shipped, suggesting things were maybe pushed over the line and out the door, as was the case with Battlefield 2042. So if you believe Marcus's statement, he has left of his own accord. Maybe there's some personal reasons he decided to act upon and make a change. Maybe it was something to do with the work that he was doing and he wasn't comfortable doing that anymore. We just don't know. And to be honest, we're probably not ever going to really find out the real reason why. But on to this new rumoured information, and just remember, when I talk about this, obviously please take it with a pinch of salt. Things can and probably will change during development, but this information piqued my interest and I think you'll probably find it, what's the word, 
illuminating, to say the least. According to Tom Henderson, a well-known gaming insider, the next Battlefield game is set to launch in 2025 with a, quote, back-to-its-roots approach, unquote, with the likes of 64-player multiplayer matches, the return of its four-class system, and an overhaul of its destruction systems. That last part we have actually heard stated by EA in the past already. The game will have a modern setting, I think even without inside rumours, most players would have been able to work that one out, since 2042 tried that near future thing, and it didn't really catch on. And lastly, there will be a free-to-play Battle Royale game mode bolted onto the premium release, just like Call of Duty Warzone. This edition is said to be the brainchild of Byron Bead, the general manager of the Battlefield franchise, but before he took up that position, he was the leader of live services for Call of Duty, so you can see the similarity here. Additionally, there will be a second game mode within this free-to-play Battle Royale portion called Gauntlet, at least that's the working title at the moment, and that's going to see teams of players complete in objective-based game modes, with the lowest scoring team being kicked out after each mission. Sounds pretty interesting. Now, in the past, Battlefield has tried this larger third pillar game mode or third way to play, most notably in Battlefield 5 with the Firestorm Battle Royale mode, and again in Battlefield 2042 with the Hazard Zone Extraction mode. Now, both largely failed to catch on, and the main reason for that is they were locked behind the premium price paywall for each game. Firestorm launched at a time where Fortnite was dominating the Battle Royale scene, and it was free to play, and Apex Legends had just surprise launched, also being free to play. Hazard Zone in Battlefield 2042, well, that was just a really poor, lackluster attempt at creating a third pillar for the game. It was very, very basic, and it lacked any sort of progression, and it was barely worth playing more than twice. And again, it was locked behind a paywall, so it never really stood a chance. This time, though, with the rumour of this Battle Royale game mode being free to play, I think Battlefield does stand a better chance at creating a solid entry into this genre. People like to say that Battle Royales are dying, but that argument just doesn't hold much weight. If you look at just the PC player numbers on Steam for Battle Royale games, Apex Legends, that's pulling in 300,000 peak concurrent players just on PC. PUBG, over half a million peak concurrents. Call of Duty Warzone, for all of its troubles, is currently in the hundreds of thousands peak concurrents. And Fortnite, likely sitting well over one million peak concurrent players. So, if you want to say that Battle Royales are not the fashionable thing to do anymore, I would kind of agree with you. But Battle Royales, in terms of player numbers, I think they are fully ingrained into the FPS world now. And I've said it for years already, Battlefield is perfectly placed to take on the challenge of making a Battle Royale mode. It's already known for higher player counts, it's known for its large expansive maps, team play features such as classes, an entire pillar of gameplay being destruction. There are some brilliant ingredients there for Battlefield to make something compelling in the BR space. They've just needed the right kind of access to really give it a chance to grow. And perhaps in Battlefield 2025, we'll finally see that opportunity arise. Personally, I am quite excited about these rumours coming out for the next Battlefield game, but... I'm not going to let them run away in my head and create other ideas. I kept my hype levels in check for Battlefield 2042 and, and by and large, not even really by and large, I was completely right to do so. That game, despite being marketed extremely well, some of the trailers were incredible, the game did not live up to the expectations that were set by the marketing campaign. Battlefield 5 was not marketed particularly well, in my opinion, and that game didn't even live up to those expectations. So, past experience would encourage some restraint around Battlefield games, and that is exactly what I'm planning to do this time. Whatever might be coming for Battlefield 2025, we are still 18 months away. We've not seen any gameplay, we've not heard anything official outside of EA earnings calls, which is obviously their chance to talk to investors and try and keep everybody happy, so you have to keep that in mind. But if there is any more info coming out about the next Battlefield game, I will keep you updated. I'm going to start posting Battlefield videos on the channel again, because like I said at the beginning, I do miss playing this franchise, and 2042 is actually much better now than what it was at launch anyway. So thank you very much for watching, and keep your eyes out for more Battlefield videos in the future. 
I'll catch you soon.